In this video, we're going to introduce solutions. And we won't spend a lot of time on solution chemistry in this class, but it'll be a really large part of the classes that follow 161. Um, but we really need to know a little bit about it if we're going to be able to accomplish anything in a laboratory setting. So let's dive in. We've already talked about matter and its classification, and we've talked about mixtures. And we said there were heterogeneous mixtures, um, which do not have a uniform composition um, throughout the, the sample. And you can usually see different phases or different compounds within it. An example would be like a, a big chunk of salt or sugar at the bottom of a, a glass of water, right? We have two different phases, solid and liquid. And sometimes they're the same phase. You could have two liquids that form a heterogeneous mixture, and that would be something like salad dressing, oil, and vinegar. They don't mix, and they're two totally different layers sitting in a bottle until you shake them up and make an emulsion. So that's heterogeneous mixtures. Now, the opposite of that is a homogeneous mixture, and that has a uniform composition throughout the sample. And so you can't distinguish one component of this, the solution versus the other. A solution is just a mixture, right? So which piece? Um, so something like this might be simple syrup, right? You have sugar and water, you mix them at high heat, and then they maintain that homogenous mixture when you cool it. Or something like uh, isopropyl alcohol in my first aid kit. It's a lot water and a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, but when I look at the, the container, it just looks like a, a clear liquid. I can't distinguish, oh, well, there's my alcohol and there's my water. No, they're all mixed together in a uniform way. Well, so when we talk about solutions, we're only talking about homogeneous mixtures. That's what we're dealing with. So we set heterogeneous aside and we're going to focus. And so within those homogeneous mixtures, a solution is going to have two parts, the solute and the solvent. Now, the solute switch to a highlighter, the solute is going to be whatever of the two substances that are mixed together you have the least of. So if I put a pinch of salt in a big pot of water before I boil pasta, I have a homogeneous mixture of salt and water. And I have just a tiny bit of salt compared to my big pot of water, so my solute is the salt. Now in, in the water in that case is going to take on the role of the solvent. And the solvent is anything that you have more of between the two that you're comparing quantities for in the mixture. Now, water is a little special. We have a whole name for a mixture with water. If water is the solvent, we call this an aqueous solution. And that's because so many things have water as the solvent that it's worth being special, I guess. I don't know, I don't name it. But we actually consider this something that we should distinguish when we have a chemical equation that we write out. And we'll talk about this a little bit later when we talk about chemical equations, but we'll use the symbol AQ to mean aqueous, which means whatever compound I list, if I put an AQ after it, it's actually in the form of a solution and it's surrounded by a ton of water. All right, so that's the basics of what a solution is. The solvent and the solute make up the solution. Now let's talk about the word solubility. Uh, so solubility is the amount of solute and solvent that can interact with each other to form that homogeneous mixture. The more solute that you can mix with solvent and still have a homogeneous mixture is an increase, is, is the amount of solubility. And as that goes up, solubility goes up. So what solubility comes from is, or how soluble something is, it derives from the attractive forces between the solute and the solvent particles and how they interact. And those attractive forces between the solvent and the solute, um, there's also attractive forces between the two solvents and between the two solutes. When they mix together, the, the ability for our solute and solvent to be able to attract to one another will dictate how much of it can actually dissolve and disperse throughout the solvent and form a uniform mixture. And this is, again, something we'll go into a lot more detail, and it's fascinating. Uh, but for now, we can say that these attractions in between the molecules, and they're not bonds, but they, they are um, based on opposite charges, um, if they're strong enough, those attractions, then the solute and solvent particles will disperse themselves around each other and spread out, and you'll have that homogeneous mixture that makes up a solution. 
And so let's talk about that in terms of aqueous solutions. In this situation, water is going to be the solvent. And just thinking back to previous chemistry classes, hopefully water is a polar compound. Um, and so it has an end that's partially negative right here and an end of the molecule that has a slight positive charge. And so that's going to interact with things like uh, salts ions, right? differently. So here we have the negative end of a water particle interacting with something positive like a cation. And the positive end of a water molecule would interact with an anion. And so this is actually a pretty strong interaction. It's an attraction from a partially charged part of a water molecule and a charged particle of the salt. And this kind of brings us to, and I think this might be the first time or second time I've said it this quarter, and I'll say it again, Coulomb's law, this attractive force between opposite charges and repulsive for force between like charges is really, is what's creating this interaction and this positive attractive force. And so water molecules will surround the negative end of the water molecule around something that's positive in the water and the positive ends will surround themselves around anions in the water. And what happens is this picture over here where we see water molecules completely surround an ion. And as it does that, it breaks that apart from the solid particle, and now it has dissolved into our solution. It's become part of a homogeneous mixture. You can't pick it out when you look at it. And that's what happens when you put a salt in water. The water molecules surround each of those ions and they pull them apart from the other ions in your salt. It is exactly like a zombie apocalypse. The, the non-zombie humans are huddled together, but if they get surrounded by a large enough horde of zombies, the zombies will pick them off one by one and completely surround them and pull them away and turn them into a zombie or part of the homogenous solution. And that's what's happening when salts dissolve in water. Now, the amount of solute that dissolves in that water can be different depending on the type of compound it is, but it can also be different based on how much we add into it, right? I can control the amount of my solute that's in my solution. And so we need a way of communicating how much of that solute is mixed with our solution, and that is concentration. So we use concentration as a way of communicating the amount of solute and the amount of solvent in a solution relative to one another. And so when we express this, and we'll go through a lot of different ways that we express it, it'll always be an amount of solute over an amount of solution um, or the amount of solvent um, as well as a possibility.